Sorry I always keep you waiting. Harley was still printing the Horowitz file for me. Whose file? Lisa E. Horowitz. One of the three women to rent a car at Wong's just before Faye popped up at Miller's place. And considering her age, the only one who could be our buddy. I asked Harley to get us some details on her. We can take a look at it, if you want. And I thought this only happened in movies. Welcome to my life. Would you rather take one last look at the board before reading her file? Do a run-through of the investigation? Just in case, I'd like to take a closer look at it. Okay. Where should we start? We know that on October 8th of last year, she showed up at Miller's house, slept with him, and vanished, only to show up a year later with a kid, Jenny, supposedly the daughter of Miller, who she's been gaslighting and drugging for weeks, disguised as his mother. Her motive? Revenge. According to what she told Dennison, he had taken everything away from her. Do you think that could have happened? Ed is afraid of committing to a partner, maybe because of his family history. But he doesn't fit the pattern of behavior of an abuser, much less a rapist. But the thing that puzzles me the most is, why did her plan backfire? Did she just slip and that's it? Did she get her revenge? and then decide to end it all? Or what are we missing? There was a men's suit in a bag we found under the bridge, which Faye wore to look like John Miller, who'd committed suicide by jumping off the same bridge. There was also a neuroleptic, likely used to put Ed Miller to sleep. Rock climbing equipment? Key to a vehicle we have yet to identify. Maybe it was her getaway car. Maybe. Faye paid him $10,000 to help her execute the last part of her plan. Together, they pushed Ed's car into the canyon. Later, Faye dressed up as John Miller waited for Dennison to wake Ed up and pretended to jump off the bridge. But wearing a harness with a rope hooked to it, she hid right under the bridge and put the disguise and the climbing equipment in the duffel bag, while Dennison made sure Ed didn't jump and called the police. Faye reenacted with total precision the accident in which... <laughs> in which Marty Miller died. As well as her daughter. Ed Miller claims that his daughter, the new Jenny, was in the car. But the only evidence we have of her existence is a picture found on Faye's phone. On top of that, Faye wanted to make extra sure to frame Ed, so she planted a gun in the car. The exact same one that killed Samuel Franklin, and a bottle of whiskey, which is exactly what John Miller had been drinking before he killed himself. We know for sure that the bullet that killed Samuel Franklin came from the gun found in Miller's wrecked car, and which we now know was planted there by Faye. 
It's no secret that she wanted to frame Miller. So she may possibly be the murderer, but why did she kill him? What did Samuel Franklin do? What did he know? The Franklin's ranch has lousy cell phone service, so somebody cut their landline so they'd have no means of contacting anyone the same night that Samuel Franklin was murdered, and just a few hours before Dennison called the police, claiming Ed Miller had tried to commit suicide at the Brody Canyon Bridge. Frankly, after four days of searching, I'm starting to lose hope. I really want to believe she's still alive, but... Something tells me we'll find her. I hope so. Thanks. Ed has several issues that are not usually seen together. To start with, the death of his family at the hand of his father, which contributed to his becoming the most cynical patient I've ever treated. Then, there's the repression of that trauma, spurred on by his Aunt Claire. And finally, somebody arriving who was capable of harnessing that trauma to intentionally drive him crazy. And is that the case? Is he crazy? Crazy is a very relative term, but if Faye's aim was to strip him of his sanity, she did not manage to do so. Well, I'd say I've got a pretty clear picture. Let's look at the file. <laughs> Great. This is Lisa Horwitz, the day she graduated from Yale as a psych major, also as valedictorian. Anything come to mind? Her studies would explain why she had knowledge of the narcotic effects of that drug, wouldn't it? Maybe. Faye told Ed that she'd just graduated as a psych major. So, it all adds up. This isn't her best picture, but it's pretty clear this could be the same person. Let's see what the file says. Daughter of Peter and Marlene Horowitz. Upper middle class. They were well off. They both died when Lisa was a little girl. Should we stick the picture on the board or skip to the next one? Let's move on to the next one. You're the boss. Now for the fun part. After her parents' death, she became depressed. Self-harm, 
suicide attempts. She spent several months in the New Jersey Psychiatric Hospital, possibly the most expensive one in New England. Rings a bell. I think a patient of mine went there. Who was it? The night before she was going to be released, her best friend from the hospital got drunk and jumped off the roof of the building. Her friend got drunk right before committing suicide by throwing herself over the ledge. Like Miller's father. Jeez, why is everything so convoluted? Did Ed Miller, after everything that happened to him as a kid, never go to a psych hospital? He almost did, but his Aunt Claire kept it from happening. She took him home to San Bernardino and essentially brainwashed him, burying most of his negative memories. Isn't it odd that her best friend from the hospital killed herself by jumping off a building and that she ended up the same way? Yes. Maybe she jumped too. Maybe she was trying to emulate her. But why? Isn't it ironic that a former psychiatric patient would pursue psychiatry? It makes sense. A few people in my class had similar backgrounds. Some did it to get to know themselves better. Others wanted to give back, help people who had gone through something similar. When she was released, Lisa went back to New York under the guardianship of her paternal grandmother, Diane Horowitz, who a few weeks later fell down the stairs, breaking her neck. What do we do with this one? Stick it there or pass? Let's move on to the next one. This is from a couple of years ago. A climbing wall in her neighborhood in New York. Another coincidence? There's no question. Lisa is our fae. Hmm. What? You're still not sure. I've been wrong too many times not to have my doubts. And this is from a few weeks ago. Lisa Horowitz applied for a position as a psychiatrist in training at the only psychiatric hospital in our county, and she got it. She's supposed to be starting at the end of the month, though I doubt she will. Why would a wealthy young woman from New York with an outstanding academic record want to work at a hospital with such a poor reputation and so far from home? The doctor who was assigned to Ed at the hospital before Robert Kerrigan hired me to treat him, was quite inclined to admitting him to a mental institution. The mental institution where Lisa was going to work is almost certainly the same one Ed would have been admitted to. Are you saying that... That was the last part of the plan. Become his psychiatrist and torture him. Let's take a look at her medical record. She weighed... Almost nine pounds when she was born. At age 11, her appendix was removed. Hmm. What is it? Let me make a quick call. Just to double check. Pat? 
It's Reyes. Remember the body we brought in uh, yesterday? The blonde girl? Ah, perfect. Can you tell me uh, if she has a scar? The kind you would have from getting your appendix removed? Are you sure? Okay. Thanks, Pat. I can't believe it. It it has to be her. It's her. But no. No, no. We were so close. I'm sorry. It happens a lot. You think you have a bite, you tug at the line, and all you have to do is reel it in, but just at the last minute. I wouldn't give it too much more thought right now. We should get some rest. It wasn't my patient. Who? What are you talking about? Tremble not, my dearest one, because there's nothing to fear. Let's wait together. Stole this from Mr. Fatbutt. What if he notices it's missing? Hmm, he got really sleepy all of a sudden. He'll be in bed for a while. If they catch you. I wasn't about to leave you all alone on your last night here. Are we best friends or what? Besides, 
I've got a surprise for you. Come on, follow me. Uh, but I'm not sure if... Are we best friends or not? Besides, you're not a patient anymore. They can't touch you. Uh, all right. But I have to finish writing my diary entry for today. It's my routine. It's your routine. I'll wait for you. We're the same age, aren't we? You're 15 too, right? Why? Mm, no reason. Are you almost done with that yet? Uh... Yeah, just a minute. They let you wear earrings that aren't clip-ons? It's a reward. I haven't hurt myself in a long time. My grandma sends them to me. She's so sweet. You're so lucky. You know what? Take one. No, I couldn't. Are we best friends or what? I want you to have something of mine, too. It's my lucky pendant. Nothing bad can happen to you, as long as it's around your neck. But... Are we best friends, or what? That looks so freaking cool on you. It's beautiful. All right, do what you gotta do and I'll show you the surprise. Oh, tremble not, my dearest one, because there's nothing to fear. Let's wait together for the sun. To show us the monster's not here.
Hey, don't look! Whoops. Sorry. Completely empty. Hey, don't look! Whoops. Sorry. Starting tonight, you're my new best friend. That surprise? You sure you can't give it to me here? Positive. Uh, now I'm scared. What if you don't like it? Of course I'm gonna like it. This is... So exciting. Wait for me here while I finish getting it ready, okay? At one point I considered electrocuting you, but 
I need you to be disfigured from falling face first into the ground. Face to the ground. <laughs> How poetic. Not here. You'd only fall one story. Not here. You'd only fall one story. Not here. You wouldn't fall far enough. If there's one thing I'm going to miss, it's climbing therapy. I know what I'm going to do first thing when I get to New York. This is the spot. Close your eyes and give me your hand. Don't open your eyes yet. Go ahead and sit down. Here. On the ground. Mm-hmm. Ready. Open your eyes and make a wish. I'm gonna miss you so much. Whoa. Seriously. Why did I meet you so late, when I already knew I was leaving?
want to open up a little more? What's that? Consider it my way of saying thank you. For the best week of my life. But, Veronica... Oh, come on! You're out of the loony bin tomorrow! It's your last chance to do crazy stuff. I've never, ever tried it. Ooh, are we playing Never Have I Ever? My turn to drink, then. Never have I ever... Been to New York. <laughs> Cheater! <laughs> Guilty! <laughs> well, you know. <coughs> oh, this is disgusting! You get used to it. Your turn. Never have I ever... Kissed a boy. <laughs> what about a girl? <laughs> Veronica! <laughs> well, either way, really. Never have I ever... Lived with my grandma. Ha! <laughs> You're saying that because I told you I lived with my grandma before coming here. You've barely told me anything about her. <sighs> She's cool. I don't know. And now you're going to be living with her again? I want to know everything about her. And she's... a cool grandma. She doesn't even look like a grandma. She goes up and down the stairs like she's rocky. But it's my turn! Never have I ever... made my own breakfast. <laughs> you haven't? Back home, the maid did it. Here, who knows? Well, I've never made my own breakfast either, so I don't drink. Never have I ever... had a room to myself. You haven't? But here... Here doesn't count. This isn't real life. Ugh. <clears throat> I had a really pretty room at my grandma's house. And now you're going to be living there again. Tell me everything about it. So yeah, it's a really sick house. New York is so cool. <laughs> my turn. Never have I ever... Come here. I, I want you to feel the coolest thing you're ever going to feel in your life. <laughs> I think I'm a little cold. <sighs> Follow me. Scared. Take her shoes off. You'll grip onto the beam better. But I'm scared. What did we say? That this was my last night to do crazy stuff. Plus, not only am I your best friend, but also the best climber in this madhouse. Who would you be safer with? But I'm a little drunk. Give me your glasses. That way, you won't see so blurry. I'll be right behind you. Holding on to you. Each step you take will be like flying over everything that ever hurt you. Veronica, when I'm not 
here anymore? Will we still be friends? You'll always be a part of me. Face to the ground. Look what you've done. I hate you. I have to talk to Ed. Wait, let me see if I'm following this. All of the girls on this list are random hookups or fans that may possibly have something against you, with reason? Oh no. Oh no. No. No way. Oh, I was worried there. It's three pages long. Those are the ones I remember. I've lost contact with a lot of the others or forgotten their names. 
The number on the left is my guess for how angry they are, if that helps. Doesn't help, does it? Anyway, there was something important you had to tell me? I don't know what the best way to put this is, but... Don't ask why, but I need you to tell me about Veronica Kerrigan. What? Why? No. Ed, please. It's important. What is this? Don't let a single day go by without Ed telling me about some childhood trauma? Ed. Even with what she did to me, tarnishing her memory isn't what I had planned. She was completely off her rocker, but she was a kid and the daughter of a good friend of mine. Well, at least at the time. Trust me. Please. Only since I owe you one. Sweetheart, what did the bread do to make you want to torture it like that? I don't know. It's fun. Can we go to the movies? Yeah, yeah, sure. If you take your medicine, we can go this weekend. Oh, Dad. What did the doctor say? That's better. Can we go to the movies today? Oh, uh, right. Not today. I have to work. You always have to work. Sweetheart, I'm meeting Ed Miller at five, so... It's always Miller. Did you like our vacation last summer? Mm-hmm. Well, we wouldn't have gone to Paris or Rome if it hadn't been for Miller's book tour. It's always that Miller guy. And that's a good thing. If his second book goes like the first one did, I'll have a ton of time to spend with you. Besides, he's a great guy, and he really cares about you if you just give him a chance. But it's just... Sweetheart, I'm running late. I have to brush my teeth. We'll talk about this later. No. What if something happened to Dad? I have plenty of pills. 
but they'd know they were mine. What if Dad walks in and catches me? Veronica, baby girl, it's not Ed's fault that you got cut. It wasn't his job to pick up the broken glass. The idea I got from the newspaper is better. Pick a wine, Ed. We have to work late anyway, so why not enjoy it? You should get to bed, Veronica. It's late. I'm not gonna let them. Not the doctors, not Miller, not anybody. No one's turning me into a lame brain or stealing dad from me. Sleep, Dad. What's going on? Oh, thank God. I think this door is stuck. Can you open it from your side? I was really scared, Dad. Hey, come on. It wasn't that bad. I love you so much, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Ah, get cracking. I'm gonna be late for a meeting, and you're gonna be late for school. Yeah, right. The bus comes in 45 minutes. Okay. But don't get sidetracked, because then you'll miss it again. Don't stare at it like that. Be patient. Ten months till your birthday, and a promise is a promise. Who's daddy's pretty little girl? <laughs> Veronica. Be good, sweetie. Of course. Forty-five minutes. 